It is Goodwill Outlet Day, friends. Hello, welcome to 2024. I am filming this on January 1st. I was just here yesterday. If you have not seen that video, I will link it down below. I'm on a roll. I'm off work from my full-time job until tomorrow. So I'm gonna spend a couple hours here. Let's see what we can find. One thing I love about this location is that uh, they are constantly changing and rotating the bins all day. I've been to some locations, you guys, where it just, <laughs> It just stops for hours. One that I remember specifically is Salt Lake City. So I was super happy about this. Also, the Goodwill outlet in Dallas moved quite a bit slow. I don't know. I think I'm spoiled here because literally all day, you guys, from open to close, they are rotating bins. There's no lunch break. It's great. Anyways, while everyone was crowded around trying to get in the new bin, you guys know how I do it. I go through the picked over bins. I take my time. I go from top to bottom and I was finding amazing stuff. You are going to see a haul, but let me show you immediately. This was the first bin I went to. I found some free people movement leggings in perfect condition that I have actually already sold. We are going to revisit these videos and I am going to go through with you everything that sold um, because a lot of this stuff I'm going to show you, you guys, I've already sold. So the free people leggings have sold already. I'm going to show you those in a second. I just like to show when the new bins come out because I know a lot of you find it fascinating. And also he's going through the rules on the loudspeaker right now. I wanted to leave that audio in, but they play very loud music here. So I can't do that because of YouTube copyright stuff. But he was basically saying, don't touch the tables until they bring all of them out. Um, and if you do not follow the rules, you will be kicked out. Like they don't mess around. I remember a couple years ago, they never had security here and now they have security and they don't mess around. He was saying you will be kicked out. So, and he recited that in English and Espanol. So it was very loud. Those were the leggings I found sold already. I picked through this bin top to bottom and I found some great stuff. I found this 100% silk cachet top. You guys friendly corrected me. Cachet was way more fancy than Forever 21. <laughs> In a video, a couple videos back, I kind of referenced like, do you guys remember the store cachet? It was like a nice Forever 21. You guys are right. I don't know. I, and once you guys said that, I remembered going there as a kid with my mom. It was way nicer than that. And it was way more expensive. It gave more. I'm trying to think of a mall brand store that's nice. I can't think of one because I don't go to the mall, you guys. Anyways, I found this scarf reseller life. I go to the Goodwill outlet. I don't go to the mall. I thought this was silk, but then I felt it immediately. I was like, this is not silk, um, but it's new with tags. I told you I have this problem. If something is new with tags at the Goodwill outlet, I almost always pick it up. I figure I could probably, even if I can sell it for five bucks, I don't know. I just want to save it. It's new. Somebody will buy it. So I'm probably going to give that as a free gift with purchase. I am not pregnant, but I buy girl clothing, baby girl clothing all the time from the Goodwill outlet. It's so cute. It's so affordable. And I am manifesting a baby girl after I get married this year maybe next year. I have so much girl clothing. It's ridiculous. You guys, for someone that has two little boys, it's ridiculous, but I am planning ahead and being frugal. So I picked up that. I will spare you all the kids stuff I bought on this day. I bought a ton of stuff for my three-year-old, a ton of stuff for my seven month old and for some little girl that I don't know yet. Um, Giorgio St. Angelo. I looked this up because I was like, ooh, these are 100% merino wool. Goodwill only wanted $6.99 for these. Um, this is this is vintage. I was going to say the brand is vintage. I, I, don't, I couldn't find much info on the brand. Anyways, these ended up having some holes, so I did not pick them up. Had they not had the holes, even though the sell-through rate wasn't the best, I probably would have picked these up, you guys. They're 100% merino wool. They may have sat for like a year or more, but they would have sold. Anytime I pick up anything 100% merino wool, it may sit for a while, but people love it. Again, I found a couple pieces of Lululemon in a picked over bin while everybody else was focused on the new bins. These have already sold. I sold these in a live sale for $22, and my cost of goods on this day was less than $2. Look at how full my Hulkin is already. I try to pick up things if I drop them. Um, especially too, because this top was kind of cute. 
<laughs> I did pass on that one though. I think it was actually a skirt. Look at how full my bin is. Um, I ended up finding a new Tags J Crew T-shirt. I already sold this for twenty three dollars. I can't remember exactly the sales, you guys, but we will do a haul and I will show you. Um, some amazing things happened on this trip. Let me just prepare you. Number one, this Goodwill location has started doing mystery bags. I have already unboxed it, so make sure you subscribe and come back tomorrow for that video because I'm going to post it tomorrow. Um, and then two, I always tell you guys, I try to talk to people wherever I go about reselling. I don't hide it. And I made an amazing friend and he gives us some amazing knowledge about sales. He's been doing it for 22 years. His name is Mark. I was checking out after I bought the mystery bag and I was asking the cashier like, oh, when did you start doing this? Do you do this every day? And she didn't really have much information. So Mark was behind me and he was like, oh, he was like, you know, they actually refill it throughout the day and they do mystery bags at other locations too. You should check that out. And then we walked out together and we literally talked for like 40 minutes and he's been a reseller for 22 years. He has sold, he's literally sold something you guys for $45,000. So um, you're going to meet Mark. I did not show his face and he's going to tell you some amazing things about the Goodwill outlet, about reselling, about how reselling has changed. I just love talking to resellers that have been doing this for a long time. Charter Club, Duster, already sold, great condition. It had 3% cashmere. I like to say my hands can feel cashmere, even if there's 1% cashmere in it. I've been doing this so long that I will find cashmere and sniff it out. So let me show you the mystery bags. Let's hear some amazing information from Mark, and then I'm going to give you some more info at the end. This was an amazing day, friends. I'm so glad I spent a couple of hours here um, on New Year's Day. I think I was here for a total of two or three hours. We'll talk about that, but let me show you the mystery bag which I've already unboxed. I did pick up those Outdoor Voices leggings. Those have also already sold. Um, look at that. So the orange bags are $20. The white bags are t-shirts. Those are $15. I should have picked up all these bags. I don't know what I was thinking, you guys. Now that I've unboxed it, I can't wait to show you. I should have picked all these up. But now let's go outside. So I ended up checking out. I met Mark. We went outside. He gave me an educational lesson that I wanted to share with you guys. And then we'll go to the car and I will give you more info. Youngsters <laughs> were doing it. The first five years, there were no young kids. It was just like people that were buying mm -hmm. stuff. And Gucci bags used to come out like no once, way. once in a while. Louis Vuitton. Yeah. I found a Louis, like the third year I was there, I found a Louis Vuitton raincoat it's called a macintosh wow a yeah i've and, seen them and um it was just sitting there so i bought it for like and everything was only one dollar mm -hmm. no scales back then so yeah um i had to take the jacket to beverly hills retail yeah. the store i had to uh -huh. make an appointment i put a shirt and tie on wow i took the jacket i told the manager the manager said yeah bring it in let me yeah. look at it uh, i said my this is my uncle's coat but I want to make sure it's real. Yeah. He took me over. He opened oh up a gosh. book. The Macintosh uh, section of the book. Yeah. He looked at the stitching. Uh huh. He said, "Yeah, we these are these retail in our store. They're five thousand dollars." No way! Yeah. That's amazing. But this is like we're talking about two thousand and four. Yeah. You know? So uh, wow. I put it on eBay, and two days later, it sold for seven twenty-five to the buyer Tokyo wow. his name is Tokyo Fast Buyer yeah so he bought it I'm like I can't believe but it's wow. not like it's not like that would come out right. every week maybe yeah every once in a while a but you don't find stuff like that here now no, because they to, put it online first of all they sort everything yeah and second of all you see how the fights go yeah mm-hmm I've been doing this 22 years yeah it started off as just like I needed some surf shirts, mm -hmm. you know, instead of going to the surf shop yeah. and spending $22 for a Quicksilver shirt. Yeah. I went to the Panorama store. I said, let me see. And the first day I walked in, I found like six t-shirts, a rusty awesome. uh, snowboard, pull, one of those pullovers. I'm like, yeah. So I go to the register. How much? A dollar. I'm like, no how way. much? I'm like, Jose, how much is? This? He goes, it's only a dollar. I'm like, really? 
How so, long has this location uh, been here? This one, like 12 years. Wow. Or eight years, but it used to be further down. Uh -huh. um, if you go down San Fernando Road to 26th Street and make a left, uh -huh. uh, where you know where St. Vincent yep. de Paul's is? Yep. Okay, so across the street on that first street, that was the original outlet store because uh, I was going there 22 years ago. Wow. That one opened, I think, 23 years ago. Yeah. So it opened the year... Yeah, so they opened and then it got, they became too big. So yeah, they closed that they one came and, here. Wow. And the Panorama store opened in 2000. Yeah. And they used to bring out like electronic shit, like real pay phones. Mm -hmm. You're not old wow. enough to know what a no, pay phone No, I know what that is. So yeah. they had the pay phones. And there was one time, like in 2001, um, where four pay phones came out with the dial mm -hmm. on them, a dollar a piece. So I grabbed them. And I put them on a, a site that was called The Recycler. There was yeah. uh, an old newspaper. Mm -hmm. You put a free ad. This this man came over, this hillbilly, big, heavy guy. Where do you live? I said, uh, Granada Hills. I'm in Silmar. Hold the shit. I'll be right over. <laughs> I'm like, because I, I was asking $200 a piece. I yeah. didn't know what kind of price. Yeah. I said, well, these are the old AT&T phones. Mm -hmm. He said, he was like, I, I live in Silmar. Hold the shit, I'll be right over. So he came over within 15 minutes. Yeah. Gave me $600. Oh my god. Took gosh. the stuff. And the, I live in a house and I just started collecting. Like, I, it became a lot of fun. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh man. I would buy surfboards, surfboards that were damaged, but name brand yeah. surfboards. And I know all the brands because I surf. Uh -huh. This one came out called Lightning Bolt, uh, made in Hawaii by Jerry Lopez. One of the most famous surfers in the 70s. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, Jerry Lopez is like 73, and these boards are called Lightning Bolt. Yeah. And he had his own store. I was like tying them. I have this uh, Toyota Solara, uh -huh. and I bought rope, and I just, I just wanted to make sure that nobody else grabbed them. <laughs> they were hanging out. I had four surfboards hanging out of the back seat of my car. I just wanted to get these home, and they shipped. I bought. I put. I called up the surf shop mm -hmm. in Hawaii. I was like shaking. Yeah. And they, each board sold for nine hundred dollars. I You're paid one dollar. So great! My oh, God, my friends. So I ended up spending hundred and two dollars and sixty two cents. But I pretty sure I showed you. I think I would have showed you. I got that mystery bag. I'm super excited to dig into that. That was twenty dollars. That was jeans. I have never seen that before here. Granted, I haven't been coming here that often um, before the last two days. Sorry, sinuses. I had not been here in six months, but I've never seen that before. And I've been coming here for almost like six or seven years. So that's super exciting. I was going to dig into it right now, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to do a video, make some content out of that. So separate video will be coming on that soon. If I haven't already done it, I will link it down below if it's up. And then the things that I got, I ended up getting 35 items. Um, so it's 25.9 pounds at $3.19. I still can't believe how expensive it is, but it's it's good. And I paid $82.62 for that. So I'm pretty happy with that. I got some, the reason that was kind of high, I'm saying air quotes, because that's a really good deal still. I got some heavy coats that I did not show you guys. I got a size large Kenneth Cole coat. And I don't know if I showed you the size 18 Bowden 100% cotton coat that coat alone could easily pay those two coats could easily pay for the whole haul probably more I will keep you posted I'm not sure if I'm going to sell those in a live sell or list them I probably will list them but all of that aside meeting Mr. Mark <laughs> I filmed that because so many people when I tell you guys that I make friends with people, I'm not joking. The way the conversation started was I was buying the denim bag and I asked the cashier, it's like, do you guys do this every day? Because I've never seen this. I told you, I talk to everybody. And she was like, oh yeah, we do it every day. And she's like, the nice thing is, is that we refill it too. Like um, you're buying, because I bought the last denim bag. She's like, we'll probably put like 10 more out. And I was like, this is awesome. And so then Mark behind me was educating me. He was such a wealth of knowledge. And you probably heard in the clip. I don't know if I'm going to put the clip in. I didn't show his face. Um, 
he's been going to the Goodwill Outlet for 22 years and he was telling me like, oh, other locations do this too, like every day if you're looking for these. And uh, that's when he told me the story of how he sold his Queen jacket signed by four members of Queen for $45,000, you guys. I almost asked him if I could interview him and put it on my YouTube channel. <laughs> This is why I love making reseller friends that have been doing it for so long. A lot of the reseller friends I have, you guys, you've never heard of. They don't have a YouTube channel. They don't have any interest in YouTube. They don't even know about the YouTube reselling world. A lot of my reseller friends are like Mark. They've been doing this for like 20, some of them almost 30 years. And they want nothing to do with social media. And they're very successful at it. So he told me the story of how he and his mom loved Queen. I guess there was a tour. I don't know much about Queen other than the movie. I loved the movie and I know a couple of their songs. They did a tour, a worldwide tour where they skipped the US completely. They went to Japan and they went to Europe and he and his mom loved Queen and they're like, we're gonna go to Japan and see them in Japan. They, the concert's over. Mark goes up to a security guard and he's like, hey, my mom and I are from California. We flew all the way here because you guys skipped the U.S. Could we go backstage? He's like, I was just going to shoot my shot and see. Like, if he says no, he says no. And the security guard was like, absolutely. You guys came such a long way. Here's two backstage passes. His mom starts crying. <laughs> she goes up to Freddie, Freddie Mercury. He signs her T-shirt. Mark has his jacket. Uh, Freddie signs his jacket. He ends up meeting the bass player or the drum. I don't know. Four members of the, I don't know them, their names exactly, end up signing the jacket. He's had it for so long. The movie comes out, the Queen movie. When did that come out? A couple years ago. And he's like, I should look into like what this could be valued at. He con I, I learned so much from Mark in our little 30 minute conversation. He told me if you ever find anything super valuable like that, contact an entertainment attorney specifically that has to do with celebrities contact an entertainment attorney because they have the connections and they know who will pay top dollar for these types of things so he contacted an entertainment attorney here in LA the entertainment attorney said it's going to go to one of two places either Switzerland or the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland um, this was 2020 so he's like the pandemic just hit let's wait trust me we want to wait on this because you'll get top dollar he said, you know, let's put out the feeler of $90,000. $90,000, you guys. Let's shoot high for $90,000. We'll probably land somewhere around $50,000. This is what the entertainment attorney is telling Mark. And he's like, holy crap. It did take three years to sell. Long story short, uh, they were different people were like bidding on it. They landed at $45,000. And that's how much she sold that jacket for. How amazing is that? I love making friends, you guys reseller friends. I love when I just randomly start talking to people. We become buddies and they tell me such helpful information and just interesting. He kept saying like, I'm so sorry if I'm holding you up. I was like, this is fascinating to me. You are not holding me up. I had to get out of the bins. You guys, my allergies started flaring up. I told you in the last video, I've got you guys, my oldies, but my goldies know my sinuses try to kill me every time I come here and I forgot my mask. Well before COVID, I used to wear masks in the bins because it's just dusty. And for any of you that suffer from sinus infections or sinus issues, my number one tip for going to the bins is put a mask on you guys. You'll be able to last in the bins longer. You won't, your sinuses won't get agitated. I forgot my mask in my car, so I only stayed there for an hour and a half. But then I stayed and talked to Mark for like another 30 to 45 minutes, and it was amazing. So hopefully you enjoyed this little story time. Mark, if you're watching this, I highly doubt that. But if you are, it was a pleasure meeting you. I almost asked him for his phone number, but I was like, okay, Nikki, don't be like creepy. Like, I feel like he would have been cool with it because this is the type, of, these are the type of reseller friends that I have, you guys. They're usually a bit older than I am. Um, they've been doing it for a long time and they have no social media following. Like those are the people that I tend to really look up to because they are just, they love it, obviously. They've been doing it for decades. They love it like I do. Like I've always told you guys, if I became a millionaire, I would probably be a reseller in some form, whether it be like reselling things from my home, reselling things I find, like vintage finds. I genuinely love reselling. So I connect with the people that have been doing it so long and just still love it. And you can just tell that he loves it. 
and I find their knowledge so fascinating. So that's why I tend to gravitate towards the people. He told me his age, he said he was 60. I tend to gravitate towards people that are, you know, a bit older than me because they're so knowledgeable and it's just so fascinating. And he was telling me, which is horrible. He was telling me like all the bros. If you go to the bins, you know what the bros are. Every bins around the country I've been to have the bros. They're younger. They're like 20, 25 years old. They're looking for vintage stuff. They sell at the flea markets. He was like all the bros call him like old timer and they like make fun of him. And I'm like, that is so horrible. Like you are such a wealth of knowledge. They could learn so much from you. Um, and that's what I love to do. So hopefully you found this helpful. This turned out to be an awesome trip. Forget about the clothes. I got a great story out of it and I learned a lot, but I did score some great stuff. Stay tuned for the haul. Hopefully you will subscribe and I will see you soon.